Okay, 2.6, proving geometric relationships. First up, the right angles congruence theorem. Here's what it says. It says, you ready for this? It says, all right angles all right angles are congruent. What? Yeah, all right angles are congruent. They're all 90 degrees, and hey, they all have the same measure, so they're all congruent. So that might be sound kind of obvious, but now we have a theorem that says it. Okay, there it is. All right, so um, let's go to a two-column proof. Um, so the um, given info, I'm going to just copy that um, down into my first statement, statement A. Oh, segment A, B is... This symbol means perpendicular, right? Um, so in case you didn't know that, that means perpendicular. So that means they're going to be at a right angle, right? And then AD is perpendicular to segment DC. All right. Okay. That's my given info. So now let me think about what that actually means. So for this piece, AB and BC are congruent. Well, AB and BC, those two not congruent. They're perpendicular. Um, those two are perpendicular, which means that they're at a 90-degree um, angle. That means I've got a 90-degree angle right there, right? And then the second batch are the other two sides, AD and DC. Here's AD. Here's DC. Those are all also perpendicular, so I've got a right angle in that corner, okay? So we're trying to prove that angles B and this is a typo here. This should say angle D. I'll fix that on the printout. Um, it should say that those um, angle B and angle D are congruent are, is what I'm trying to um, prove. Well, hey, they're both right angles, so they are congruent by the right angles congruence theorem. Okay, But I can't go straight to that yet because I haven't said that they're right angles yet. Okay, So even though I know they're right angles because I know what perpendicular means, it's not in my proof. It's not in the given info. So I have to put it in here. So I have to say angle B is a right angle. Whoops, is a right angle. Um, and then also angle D is a, I'll just abbreviate here, a right angle. Okay, how did I know that? Well, I knew that because of this symbol, right? That symbol told me the lines are perpendicular. So this is the definition of perpendicular. And you could just write the little symbol if you want to. Or you can write out the whole word. Okay, now that I've got, I've stated that those are both right angles, well now I can say they are indeed congruent to each other. And they're congruent to each other because all right angles are congruent. And that is the right angles congruence theorem. Look at that beautiful abbreviation I did there. Right angles congruence theorem, right? That's what this is, okay? You know, for me personally, I mean, I know when um, you're doing a multiple choice test or something like that or online homework, you can't really choose the wording. But if you forgot the name of this, you could just describe it and say all right angles are congruent and then I know you understood the, the concept, okay? All right, so this is a two column proof. Those are the kinds that I usually do and that I kind of emphasize, but you'll also see um, flow charts sometimes. So um, I'm gonna take this same um, proof that we just did and rewrite it as a flow chart, okay? So I'll show you how this works. It's, it's gonna be the exact same info, just a different um, way to organize it. So we've got the arrows showing us, you know, where we're gonna start over here and work our way down that way. So we got three steps here, right? And we got three boxes. So in the first box, I'm going to put statement A. Which is the given info, okay? Now I have to put the, the justification for that something, that where the, the reason which is given, and I'm just going to do that down here. So in parentheses, I'm just writing given like so, and that means that's the justification for that step, okay? And then I'll put my second step right here.
Okay, and justification for that, definition of perpendicular. So I'll abbreviate here, definition of perpendicular. And then last up, we got angle B is congruent to angle D. And um, that was the right angles congruence theorem. Okay. Um, so there it is. So I kind of prefer the two column proofs, but there is an advantage to um, to um, the flow chart proofs. Where like sometimes one piece, one step will lead to two different steps. So you could do like have another box that it points down to or something like that branches off. Maybe this leads to three different things that are kind of independent of each other, and you could have them forking off and kind of show. Um, you could have a fork going in different directions and show how they lead to each other. Okay. All right. Next um, theorem is called the congruent complements theorem. All of these theorems ha are have numbers in the book. These, we're in chapter two, so this might, I don't I forgot the number. It might be theorem two point four or whatever. But don't worry about the numbers. Those aren't important at all because those that just means it's you know what. It's just numbering which one we've gotten to in the book, but that's independent. That's specific to this book, so it's not important at all. The names are much more important. All right, so this says that if two angles are complementary to the same angle, I really should say or congruent angles. So the same angle or two angles that have the same measure, right? Then those two angles are going to be congruent. To each other. So I'm going to say then they are congruent to each other. Okay, so if two angles are complementary to the same angle, then they're congruent to each other. So let's look at this picture I have here. So this says, um, let's see what we got here. So we've got the, um, the little right angle marker which tells me that um, that this angle that I just put the little uh, dash in is going to be um, complementary to angle one, right? Not, uh, because they form a 90 degree angle, okay? But then when I look at these two angles, that angle is also complementary to angle two. So angle one and angle two are complementary to the same angle, so they're going to be congruent to each other, right? And like, if you wanted to find the measure of angle one, it's gonna be 40 degrees, right? 50 plus something equals 90. So you can see that angles one and two would be um, congruent, congruent to each other. They're both complementary to the same angle and that makes them congruent to each other, okay? Um, and then we've got the exact same thing with supplementary um, angles, the congruent supplements theorem. If two angles are supplementary to the, the same angle, really should say, or congruent angles, then they are congruent to each other. Okay, so I'm not going to draw a picture for that, but it'll be a similar kind of thing. It's just set in. I'm adding up to 90, they'll add to 180, right? Okay, and then here's another one, the linear pair postulate. If two angles form a linear pair, so let's remember what a linear pair is. Let's draw a picture here. A linear pair are two adjacent angles that when you put them together, adjacent means next to each other, they form a straight line, okay? So angles one and angle two, that would be a linear pair. If two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. They're gonna add up to 180 degrees, right? This is 180 degrees right there. So that would be supplementary. I could say measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180 degrees. They form a straight angle in other words, right? So again, that's kind of information that you probably knew already, but now we've got a uh, an official um, postulate to state it. Okay. All right. Next page. Um, got a couple proofs on the well, just one proof, I guess, on the next page. Um, all right. Here we go. 
This one comes with a beautiful diagram. All right, given information, I'm not even thinking about this. I'm just going to take that in there and recopy it. Okay, and I'm abbreviating. And that's given. That was just given info, okay? And then I want to prove that angle one and um, angle three are congruent. Okay, so let's think about this. We're told that um, that one and two, so that's this angle and this angle, those two are supplementary. Okay, all right. So what can we do with that? Let's see. I can't really do anything with just those being supplementary. So I'm looking at the um, diagram and I'm thinking, well, what can I do with the diagram? Can I say anything about the relationship of any of these angles, especially the numbered ones, right? If they're numbered, you're probably gonna use those in the proof. And I can say something about these two, right? That because they form a linear pair. So now I can say that those two angles are supplementary. Okay, and the reason I can say that is because I can see they are a linear pair. So that is the linear pair postulate. Okay, so sometimes some people would say a definition of linear pair, which I would kind of accept that because I can see it's a linear pair and definition of a linear pair, they form a straight line, which is 180 degrees, but really it's the linear pair postulate is the better um, answer there, okay? Um, and then what can I do? Well, hey, I've got these two angles are um, supplementary and then I've got those two angles are supplementary, okay? So when you feel like you're stuck and you don't know what to do, look at the steps that you already have in your statements. And here I've got, hey, um, angle one is supplementary to this angle and angle three is supplementary to this angle. So I've got two different angles that are supplementary to the same angle. That means they are congruent to each other. So now I can say angle one must be congruent to angle three and that would be the congruent supplements theorem. They're supplementary to the same angle, okay? Um, um, on tests, a lot of times in a situation like this, I'll see substitution or um, people say, oh, well, I substituted into the other one, but you can't do that because we don't have these being equal to each other or congruent to each other, okay? So that's not gonna work. Substitution, and it kind of feels like the transitive property, but it's not transitive either. So the only way um, this is going to work is with the congruent supplements theorem. The congruent supplements theorem. Look at that great abbreviation I got going there. That's the congruent supplements theorem. Okay. All right. One more theorem, and it's one I've kind of told you about a few uh, sections ago when vertical angles came up the first time. So first you got to um, remember what vertical angles are. Um, this is when you have two lines that are intersecting or line segments or whatever, okay? And the angles across from each other are the vertical angles. So I could say angle one and angle two are vertical angles, okay? Vertical angles theorem says that vertical angles are congruent, which I've already talked about a little bit, but now it's official in the book, okay? So here's what the vertical angles theorem says. It's not even an if-then. It's just vertical angles are congruent. That's it. Okay. So there's another pair of vertical angles in here. Those two would be vertical angles and they're congruent to each other. It's not that all four angles are congruent. This pair is congruent. They're a pair of vertical angles. This pair is congruent. Okay. All right. So with that in mind, now we can solve a problem like this. Okay. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, oh, I got vertical angles here. So those two angles are congruent, these two angles are congruent. And that's gonna allow me to um, solve both for x and y because I can write an equation out of these. I can say uh, 4x plus seven equals three times x plus six. Okay, and I can also write an equation with the y angles, five y plus 29 
is equal to 7y minus 11. Okay, and I can solve both of those now. If you end up with an equation, sometimes you'll end up where the x and y, um, the x's and y's are across from each other on both pairs. And you can still just write two equations, but then you'd have to do substitution or elimination. That would take a lot more work. But this one, we got lucky because we got just got x's over here. Um, so 4x plus 7 equals 3x plus 18. I just used the distributive property there. Okay, now I'm going to subtract 3x from both sides to get these x terms together to combine my like terms. And then subtract 7. And I always want to be careful with the, these problems. I didn't even read the directions here. Um, because sometimes we're solving for x and y. Sometimes we're looking for like the measure of the angles here. It just says solve for x and y. So there's x. And I'll work on the y. So I'm going to start by subtracting 5y from both sides. And I'll add 11 to try to isolate the y, or to start isolating it. And I will divide by 2. And there is x and y, and that's the end of the section. See you next time.